Hey everyone, back with another video and this time I thought we could look at something a bit different which might actually be a first for this channel and that is a sharp. More precisely it is this here Dürer Backpiper Messer by Adam Bodoric. <laughs> Before we get into that, though, formalities out of the way, as per usual. So first and foremost, this is a custom made for me. I paid for this with my own money. It wasn't part of any kind of deal. Um, Adam wasn't aware that there was going to be a review, though, to be honest, he might have guessed. Because if you look back at the channel, I've reviewed a number of things, either by Adam directly under his own brand, Adam Bodoric Swordmaker, or by his company, Landsknechts Emporium. That neatly leads into another thing, and that is that even though I try to keep things as objective as I can, there is just the thing that I've been in contact with Adam since 2016, ever since I bought my first messer from him, which later was to become the Gottfried standard line of messers. I've bought a number of other things from him, from Landstein's Emporium, from him directly. And that just leads to a certain kind of bias that I can't really get rid of. So what you have to keep in mind is that I am talking about a custom made by someone that I talk to regularly, even outside any kind of HEMA smithing messer related things. So I have every incentive to be biased as much as I might try to, to not be. <laughs> Other than that, the structure is going to be basically the same, though slightly different, because this of course is a sharp, so there won't be any fencing footage of me. Tiny bit of cutting. Um, it, it just, I can't really, you know, talk about this the same way I do with my usually workhorse fencing pieces. Um, so there will be my talking part. I will go over the, the ordering process. I will go over what it is and what I like and what I didn't like. And there will be pictures and a short cutting video at the end, generally the same structure. Okay, then with that out of the way, let's get on to it, shall we? So as I said, I can't quite talk about this the same way. Part of that is already just like the first point I would normally go over would be um, ordering process and the thing is there wasn't really like a formal ordering process for this piece here because I never really like pushed an order button or sent Adam a formal message about it. This came about as a result of a conversation we had really and that is actually um, because of another piece of Adam that I have that is a messer that is made in the style of Hans Sebald Behan who is uh, not quite as famous as Dürer, but there are at least suspicions that he might have been uh, had his education in the workshop of uh, Dürer. And um, he is famous for having made edges of little people, normal folks, farmers. That's not all he did, certainly not, but that is at least from, from our perspective now, or from my perspective, something that is very interesting. You get a good insight of what they wore, what they did when they had celebrations, uh, also the kind of knives and swords that they carried. And because of that messer, which wasn't made for me, but might have well been just because it basically ticks all the boxes, uh, I started looking into other similar etchings and I stumbled upon an etching, a, a plate, a picture made by Dürer and that is simply called the backpiper and it shows a backpiper and on his hip you can see a blade hanging. You can't see a lot of it but you can you can see some details enough to, to, to make it interesting and I was a bit fascinated by it because I have always had knives. I've, I've grown up with knives, basically yes, for as long as I can think. My, my mom collected knives, uh, so I kind of grew into that. And I have swords, of course, a number of. Um, I never really had anything except maybe one Bowie knife that was in, in this kind of 
length. So that was something that I found very interesting. And I just kept looking at that picture and, and started talking to Adam just how, how would it look, how could it look, because you can't really see too much. And well, what you see here is the result of that conversation we had. If you look at the picture, again, you can't really see too much. Um, you can see basically the type of grip that it would have from the form. You can guess that it is probably this trilobe shape, as at least like bilobe, maybe three. That would not be atypical. You can see that it has by pieces, and you can guess the general shape of the blade. Everything else, though, no idea really. And in a way, we just took that as license to be a bit creative and just fill the gaps. So points, for example, where uh, we just made decisions or rather Adam made the decisions and I just nodded along with them uh, for the most part is, for example, the grip material. It could have been leather, just from, from the plate itself, from the etching, you can't really tell from the print. Uh, that's actually a point where we had a bit of back and forth, actually, um, because there is, if you look at the print, there is a bit of a hard edge here at the grip. And that could be because it is a hard material like the ebony here. Or it could have been because it is actually where the leather is glued. That is exactly the kind of edge you actually see on the Beham messer. So in the end, we just decided on ebony because Adam had some nice ebony and I do love me some ebony. So that is the why we have this here. The general form also was a bit of a question because you can't really tell how the blade looks. It could have been symmetrical. Adam looked closely at the picture and thought that it would probably be more asymmetrical, like this one is. He left the final choice up to me, but we both agreed basically that this is very attractive. So that is what we went for. Also, while we're on the blade, of course, no idea how the blade would have looked because it's still in its scabbard, really. When we talked about it, I generally grew up with, you know, just the normal one or two, maybe three fullers, and that is, that is fine. That can be very beautiful. But I mentioned to Adam, while we talked about it, that I was actually always fascinated by pieces that I saw uh, from Hans Sumersberger who made pieces for Maximilian I, the German emperor. He has a number of pieces where he actually had this kind of honeycomb-like type of fuller, which when I first saw it, it absolutely blew my mind. I hadn't really considered ever that, you know, that could very well fulfill the same function. And I always kind of wanted to have it, but I wasn't quite sure if it was really feasible. So I asked Adam and he said that with as long as I could live with them being organic, then it, it would be doable for what we had in mind, actually. Fun fact on that, it is still more regular, actually, than the original by Hans Sumersberg. If you look at those, they are way more irregular. Um, still, not going to complain about what I have. As I said, it just absolutely blew my mind, and this is certainly quite beautiful. The uh, scabbard in and of itself, just looking at the print, is very, very plain. It is a bagpiper piece at all. The musicians generally weren't rich, I would dare say. So we decided to keep it kind of simple, but it's probably more decorated than the uh, piece that it is based on from the print would have been. But still, you know, just keeping it kind of simple. Um, only some decorations, which I still find really quite beautiful. That is basically how this piece came to be, right? It was a part of a conversation, just deciding what could maybe have been, what would be feasible, what 
we both like in pieces and in the end yeah that that is how that came to be so i can't really speak about ordering um it was sent to me via the dhl express and with me within a day again i i don't quite know how they do that i just seem to be at a very good place for that spe specific type of delivery really it's a bit insane sometimes um maybe then let's let's talk about what we actually have you know now that we came uh, now that we talk about how it came to be really um what though before we go to that maybe what i should really mention is that i was again in the very privileged position of actually seeing this come about i saw the first pictures of it when it was just a flat blank i could see the work that had to go into just putting the rough shape into the blade and the type of work that had to go into the the tang just the the fullest that are in the tang itself just to to lighten things up because when we come to the stacks um, the stats this is actually this is a good bit of material really so the way that had to thin out and that the fullers how they were first roughly shaped and then polished and everything the raw core of the scabbard the by pieces I, I got to see it all really which was uh, again i feel very privileged to to have been a part of it or have witnesses rather not really having been a part of it but to get that side kind of insight really was was quite beautiful um and well the good thing is i can share it with you as well so you can see that i'll try to put things up but yeah, um, before I start falling too much, what is it actually that we have here stats-wise? Uh, this, if you, if you see this without context, it can actually sometimes look a bit smaller than it actually is. This isn't a small piece. I'm not a, a giant, but I'm not exactly tiny myself. So let's speak stats then. What we have here is an overall length of 59 centimeters and of 57 my mistake and of that 39 is the blade that we have i think the impression of size also comes a bit from the grip really because when you just see it you would assume that the grip is kind of like one hand um, but it is actually a bit longer the grip is 16 centimeters overall and when it comes to the dimensions of it so if we look at the width of it we have a start of three centimeters and then it widens to the end of it we have 3.2 then 3.5 just a slight increase and then the widest part of it after it really flares out is seven centimeters overall this gives it a very secure good grip certainly wouldn't lose it it's kind of similar with the thickness when it comes to that we have 1.8 centimeters and then 2.1 2.3 2.6 so also some light flaring but not as significant but there's something going on here which again makes for a very nice and secure grip overall i would normally talk about flex but because of the material, um, I can just say, no, nope. <laughs> it is metal. There is some flex, but not significant. This is quite a stiff blade. Part of that is just the material, really. The cross is nice and measured. It's 10.5 centimeters. It thickens a bit at the cap, so it's a bit hard to really measure be overly precise but 10.5 centimeters which i really like uh, it's it's enough to be protective but it, it doesn't go overboard i find it very aesthetically pleasing the thickness of it is again it flares out a bit it's one centimeter 10 millimeters at the thinnest part and then it's 1.4 at the thicker one the nagel that we have is 25 millimeters 2.5 centimeters at the widest and it sticks out to three centimeters that's the depth of it again just looking at my hand you know it doesn't overdo it 
but certainly it is protective or it would be protective in uh, with what it is really just speaking from fencing with the Rugger, which is kind of similar from the Nagel shape it it is it, it might not it might not look big but it certainly catches a lot of uh, cuts it's quite a bit more protective than you might think at first now the blade again 39 centimeters overall is what we have and looking at taper this is quite a wide blade i find that very nice it's nearly five centimeters at the cross it's uh, 49 millimeters and then it thins well it narrows down slightly to 48 millimeters at the point of balance and then we go to 41 at the middle of the blade and then before it really starts moving to the point we are at 28 uh, millimeters then when it comes to the actual material the thickness of it the distal taper it's chunky stock it's eight millimeters actually and that's where it starts eight millimeters goes to seven at the point of balance in the middle we go down to four actually and then it's two at the point where again it starts moving into the point really so a good amount of taper and the interesting thing is i can't really measure it but um, that is kind of mirrored actually from the blade to what you can see in the tang as well that is also tapered just to get the feel for the blade right it does have a point of balance of about 37 millimeters and the overall weight is 792 grams not insignificant this isn't a light piece but it also isn't heavy like a metal rod or a brick would be i find it hard to explain really but if if you've held a certain amount of blades you might know what i'm talking about it feels not light but durable secure it, it feels good hefty is a word i might use you know, heavy is good, heavy is reliable, etc. Really. Um, as I said, I've cut a bit with it. I'm not an expert, really, but it certainly can cut. And it feels like a piece that would be able to cut. And that goes for the front edge as well, to, as well as for the 15 centimeter back edge that you have here. I actually handed this to a friend a little while ago just if i'm being honest basically showing off um tiny bit maybe and before that she handled the uh semi-sharp rugo that i also need to make a video on at some point uh which she also liked but actually she preferred this she said just because it felt quite good really in hand when it comes to me as I said, I have every incentive to, to love this piece. It is a custom made for me that I could see come together, really. So I'll, I'll try not to fawn any more than I already did. But there are certain things that I think are worth noting that I really like. Some details just. Uh, again, as I said before, this is an interesting piece in so far that is, if you just see a picture of it, you might think, that it is actually smaller than it is but it is actually quite a good sized piece so many things i love about it like one thing for example is this is ebony which i love as a material and it's it's a nice dark rich type of ebony but it does have a very very slight light streak here which i just like you know, this is this is my piece and that is definitely one way i would be able to recognize it uh, another thing i like is just the details in, in some pieces like for example the by piece if if you check out the part here where the grip goes over to the blade there's just a tiny tiny metal bar in it 
just some wire basically to to just give it a bit more thickness to it it's it's also just a very nice and sharp knife it's actually why something that i have to pay a bit attention when i put it into the scabbard again so i don't uh on accident cut into it while we're at it the pricker or the multi-tool whatever however you would classify it also quite a nice piece do love that i love the decoration of the scabbard even though it is kept simple it is i really find it quite beautiful with the details of the by knife having a different type of decoration than than the rest really the <laughs> accent on the thick spine and also there's a tiny bit of decoration on the back of the scabbard which i also find quite charming really it's a wonderful piece i i really have to say i have to i still have to find a place where i can actually put it up that's just more because we have so much stuff on our wall already uh, but that is definitely something that i just want to to yeah show people really as i said i'm quite fond of it you might have noticed uh, but again it's a custom made for me uh, that, that i could see come together that being said adam was actually quite uh, particular that he wouldn't make an exact copy of it for somebody else because that would be mine basically he has made others because ever since showing the first pictures of it uh, people have asked him to make something similar because it's a very attractive piece just overall my reply to him just was really that even if he would try to make a one-to-one -one copy i wouldn't mind because mine is mine as i said i know the light streak in the ebony on this part the try as i might as skilled as he is he is no machine he will not be able to make these fullers in the exact same shape again really these are incredibly well-made pieces by him and they are handmade which means that there are certain organic irregularities that you'll just find in them and I, I personally find that quite beautiful so as far as i'm concerned if you would want something like that just feel free to ask adam about that i certainly don't mind mine is mine just so yeah uh, before i ramble on longer just i quite like it <laughs> thumbs up cheers